tell you some things that are going to be really eerie. All of you would have heard of Michael Porter. A great strategy group. He spoke of uh, three waves of technology. The first wave of technology happened sometime in the 1960s. Um, that those were the times when you were automating manual processing, so billing, invoicing, uh, ERP systems were the biggest during those days. Uh, you know, enterprises were trying to optimize their operations, so it was enterprise resource planning. So that was a big thing during those days. SAP was in the forefront. Uh, over time, Oracle was trying to catch up with their Oracle ERP systems and so on and so forth. See again the relationship to the 1960s. That's when this all took place. And then the internet happened, which is a second wave. And the internet was a lot about coordination and disintermediation. So when, whilst you were trying to optimize the enterprise, once the internet came in, you started optimizing the value chain. So you were not just looking at optimizing things within the enterprise, you were also trying to see if you can move across to your suppliers, to your vendors, to your channels, and see how you'll be able to optimize that entire value chain. You guys catch up about enterprise? Like I'm wondering if that's her name. The third wave is quite interesting. It is insidious. You don't even realize that it's already happening. This wave is about sensors, connectors, processors, all inside the product itself. Yeah, I would say that is where we are right now, wouldn't you? And your mobile phone was the first of that. I would agree. That was the first thing that got each and every one of us start carrying around. Once you have a mobile phone, a smartphone, and you've got your app installed, you are connected to the cloud. Uh, you are connected to the world. Makes me really wonder now, what is the cloud and who owns it? So, you know, companies and organizations would know anything and everything that you're doing. They can read your, uh, the number of steps that you take. They can even look at your heartbeat. They can look at how much energy you're spending. They can look at where you are at one point in time. All of that. I don't know. Does that sound good or bad? Like, is he trying to make us feel better? That is the third wave, and that's right upon us. Okay, so that is on us. I agree with that. So, what's next? As we speak, this third wave is completely enveloping the world. And in a sense, we, we are living it, but we probably don't recognize that it's already happened. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize it, but... I think he's right, it's happened. Um, on the industrial side, there are lots of changes that's happening. After Jeff Immel took over GE, I think that was way back in 2001, GE has had to make changes radically. Um, and, and GE is actually living in what they are calling as the industrial internet. Um, GE, GE predominantly has been you know, doing a lot of their sales in heavy machinery, heavy industries, um, you know, uh, large turbines, processors, um, things like that. Now they've started embedding all those machinery with processors. And they've changed the way they are doing business today. Uh, from selling, uh, a while back they used to just sell. Then in the uh, late 1990s to the mid 2000s, most of their business started coming from what they used to call as uh, service level agreements. Essentially contracts to make sure that you know things that are running keep running in the way they wanted to. Did you hear that? The way they wanted to. But the most exciting thing is the fourth wave and it's coming at us and it's coming at us very fast. The fourth wave is when all of you would be at the peak of your careers. So you should, you should uh, sit up and take note. Yeah, I advise everyone to really pay attention to this next part. The fourth wave is going to be one where there is going to be amalgamation of boundless energy, autonomy and technology. You hear that? Boundless energy, like this is what we want, right? Add to it, how many of you have heard of the Tesla batteries? Great, at least some of you have heard of her. So Tesla batteries are very interesting. Um, so he's, uh, Elon Musk has come up with these batteries, which, which um, I don't know myself, I haven't used it so far, but he says that uh, a battery which is, you know, as big as, let's say that speaker, uh, would be able to pick up uh, all of the sun's rays and then store enough energy to tide the house through the entire night. What is the chances of having two Teslas in a century come out as the leaders of electronics? Google is working on drones, uh, solar drones that will beam Wi-Fi internet 
to rem the to remote parts of the world africa uh, to the antarctic etc again that's a leap frog because now they are not going to be dependent on wires that connect you to your home so that you'll get internet or even towers uh, that will that will connect your wire, you know to a wireless and then provide you wifi see no mention of satellites so i mean there's proof they don't exist and these are drones that are supposed to be running for about 5 years and they'll just use the uh, you know solar rays to keep running that's that's boundless energy and these are things that's going to happen when you are at the peak of your career and this is filmed in october of last year 2015 so this is coming close so imagine a world where your children or maybe your grandchildren won't have no driver's license because nobody would be driving those days there won't be any formula one racing at that time because nobody would be driving those th- those days so that's that's the world that's staring at us that's sort of hurtling at us uh, and and before you know it all these things will start happening imagine a world where there are drones that are delivering things to you amazon is already trying out these uh, concepts the federal regulator in the us has already given the go ahead to about 40 companies uh, to utilize unmanned flying objects for commercial purposes i really wonder how many of those companies are flying drones up there right now that happened in feb of 2015 there are also social implications to this um there are and i'm just giving you the us example because that's there in the literature i'm sure when it starts coming to countries like india and other parts of the world there will be other social implications but in the us there are entire towns um who whose entire subsistence uh, is based on uh, truck driving if there are self driving cars there will be self driving trucks as well and all the drivers are about to lose their jobs um uh, of course the cost of transportation would come down significantly um the 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 chances of uh, accidents would go down significantly because if there are self driving trucks there can easily be self driving trains already there are self driving trains self driving trains are much easier than self driving cars and trucks so the cost of transportation would go down the the chances of accidents would go down significantly so there will be a lot of social implication that will come in our in our world so i'm not just talking about what how technology is changing i'm also talking about how the world is changing okay so changing the world there sounds to be a lot of heartache for a lot of people though those are your uh, phones your watches your t-shirts your refrigerators your televisions you name it it could even be the seat that you're sitting on for all you know eventually just going to have to call this world a uh, sensor world instead of a globe world and that's just going to change the way we are looking and uh, and and seeing the world unless we wake up and decide to stop all this commercially there are so many things that you can do with drones you know you you, you could use it in news if let's say there's a huge mob or there's a, there's a huge unrest happening somewhere uh, you know your uh, news channels could fly a drone there without worry of somebody getting hurt and uh, beam the latest that's happening there right then and there it obviously helps police of course it does see now we get to the real reason of this photography you could get such deep photographs that you could never even think of you could let drones go deep inside a volcano and look at you know what's happening inside there i thought that was the sales pitch for satellites wasn't it uh agriculture you know farmers that are uh, that are there in the world who got huge tracts of land can use drones to spray seeds uh spray pesticides um you know in 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 different different ways yeah and i think that's how they're doing their chemtrails to be honest and that's just drones and if drones can do all these things and i'm not talking about things that will happen let's say 10 years from now these are things that will happen in the next 2 to 3 years maybe not in india it will that time will come but certainly in different parts of the world that time will come like listen to this guy apple and uh, you know tesla and uh, you know uh, google who got huge huge uh, amounts of money in their banks are putting all those resources to create these disruptions in the way we, we live so these are going to come one way or the other Okay. Deceptions one way or another. Come on people wake up. The other big thing that's happening today is uh, this is between industries and companies. Who owns the customer? See, like you can't gain clear people wake up please. So the debate can keep going on um but but uh, you know there is certainly a new world order. Now there are uh, at 
states at nation national level there are uh, questions about uh, hey uh, do i need to tap do i need to look at what's happening from a national security perspective um honestly you know it's certainly not my area obviously national security comes first um, and i am not privy to what different nations are doing to uh, track uh, whose data um but yeah i think i think national security obviously trumps a lot of these okay people i mean the research is really pointing only into one direction and if we look at it all and what the truth movement's been saying for a decade plus i mean since 9 11 a lot of people woke up started exposing the truth started bringing out what i consider puzzle pieces now if we put them all together it does create a story now think about it what if these guys have been we hear those uh, reports of um you know underground bases strange noises them using nuclear bombs down there and stuff like this what if they continued epcot and they started building this stuff underground and we're just coming up to the point now where we're seeing these chemtrails in the air what if they're down there and now they got these drones up there spraying us they got that new technology now that does that face uh, recognition or whatever and then transfers it over or whatever they could totally be spoofing this like how long have they had that technology you have to ask yourself I mean we're just seeing it now but as you can see they get this stuff way before us we all know that don't fool yourself there's a bigger plan here we're in the last stages of it wake up now that's why we're waking up the rest of us as God has woken us up for a reason so please wake up yeah.